Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing another kind of e-stim modality, and that is EMS, or electrical muscle stimulation. This is a broader uh, term that really encompasses two major modalities. The first is NMES, or neuromuscular electrical stimulation, and the other is Russian stimulation. Now, NMES and Russian stimulation, mechanistically speaking, are different in how they actually operate. However, functionally speaking, for the patient's perspective, they do the same thing. And the two applications of both of these types of EMS are edema and strengthening. Now, as we talked about in the previous video, edema can be treated using high voltage pulse current, but it can also be treated using this, NMES and Russian stimulation. So let's actually take a look over here and let's remember the electrode setup for high voltage pulse current treatment of edema. So we've got edema here in the ankle right here. So ideally we have the lower extremity elevated like this. We'd really want the ankle elevated a little bit more um, so that way gravity can help take that fluid down. But remember that the fluid that's in the edema contains these plasma proteins and those are negatively charged. So overall that fluid is negatively charged. So what we do is we put the negative electrode at the site of the edema and then we place the positive electrode somewhere up here by the hip near the greater trochanter. And then because the fluid of the edema is negatively charged, it will travel from the negative electrode where it's repelled from towards the positive electrode, which it's attracted to because of opposite and like charges, right? And then that fluid will be moving in the direction back to the heart. Additionally, if we have the lower extremity elevated, and particularly the ankle elevated even more than this, gravity, in addition to the electric charge, will also help move the fluid back to the heart. And that is the setup that we actually have for high voltage pulse current. So with high voltage pulse current, you could certainly put those electrodes over bony regions. Okay? You can put the electrodes really anywhere with high voltage pulse current, it doesn't matter. Now for NMES and Russian stimulation, the mechanism is a little bit different. Okay? The key here is this is EMS, electrical muscle stimulation. So do you think we can just put these electrodes anywhere like on bones or tendons? No, they have to go over muscle bellies because we're gonna be stimulating the muscle. And so the mechanism of this is actually going to involve simulation of a skeletal muscle pump, okay? So remember, a skeletal muscle pump normally is when we contract muscles, usually in the lower extremities, and they compress on veins with their contraction and relaxation and help propel blood back up to the heart. That's what we're simulating here, okay? So we wanna put the electrodes on muscle belly. So even though the fluid's down here, we'll actually put the electrodes probably here on the muscle belly of gastrocnemius, okay? We can use two electrodes, we can use four electrodes, okay? Actually, for this situation, I would probably use four. I've got two here on the uh, lateral gastrocnemius head, so on the other side, I'd put two on the medial gastrocnemius head, and we'd use four of them. And so, when we turn on the machine, it will actually cause contraction of the gastrocnemius, off, on, off, on, we're using muscle contraction and simulating a skeletal muscle pump in order to move that fluid back to the heart. So then how do we program NMES and Russian stimulation for edema treatment? We first get those electrodes on, and we have what's called an on time and an off time. Okay? This is because we want the skeletal muscle to turn on, and we want it to turn off. We want this rhythmic contraction and relaxation, because that's what happens with a skeletal muscle pump normally, right? So we want it on for some time and we want it off for some time. And then we have what's called an on-off ratio of one to one. So for edema control, the ratio is always one to one. Okay, when we look at strengthening, it varies. But for edema, it's one to one. So that means if our on time is two seconds, our off time is two seconds. If our on time is five seconds, our off time is five seconds. So as long as both of those times are the same, uh, that will give us a ratio of one to one. So for example, if we have an on and an off time of three seconds each, that gives us a ratio of one to one, and the gastroc will be contracted for about three seconds, it will be relaxed for about three seconds, and this cycle will alternate for the treatment duration, and this alternation 
uh, is rhythmic and it will help to move that blood through the veins and the fluid back up to the heart. The total treatment duration for edema control is usually going to be about 30 minutes and you can do this twice per day. And then for NMAS and Russian stimulation, we have what's called a ramp time. Um, I have it here, ramp up, ramp down, but usually on a machine it'll just say the ramp. And you program a certain number of seconds. Usually for edema, we want it more than one second, maybe one or two seconds. And so if we have a ramp, it basically means that we don't just get automatic full contraction of the gastroc. Okay? We ease into the contraction, and then it reaches a peak, and it stays contracted for some time, and then instead of just dropping off to total relaxation, it eases back to that relaxation. Okay? So for example, if our ramp time was one second, uh, we would be relaxed, and then it would take one second to get from relaxation to full contraction. Okay? It wouldn't just go automatically to full contraction instantaneously, it would take one full second to do that. Okay? And then whenever it's the end of the contraction and we want to get back to relaxation, it doesn't just drop off. It takes one second and gradually goes from full contraction to full relaxation. Uh, the reason we use a ramp time is because when we're getting these muscle contractions, it could be very uncomfortable if the muscle just contracts very quickly. Okay, so we want to make sure we have that ramp. And if we want to make it more comfortable for the patient, we usually would increase that ramp time. Now, NMES and Russian stimulation can also be used for strengthening muscles. Okay, one of the applications you might see of this is in some kind of a knee procedure, like a total knee arthroplasty and ACL reconstruction, where you're trying to get quadricep strengthening back. So in this picture right here, we're going to have the patient perform right isometric knee extensions, okay? So we're not starting off with the, the leg down here, okay? We're starting off with a near full extension or as much extension as the patient has. And then we're going to use isometric contractions against this resistance band, okay? And so we're using the principles of neuroplasticity here. We're applying an additional electrical stimulus, and here's the key, plus an active contraction of the quads by the patient. Okay? This should not be a passive procedure. You can apply all the EMS you want, and if the patient's doing nothing, they're not going to get anything out of it. So you have to apply the electrical stimulation with an active muscle contraction to get strengthening. And in order for this technique to be maximally effective, you're looking for a tetanic contraction of that muscle. In this case, it would be of the quadriceps. Now we also have an on time and an off time here, but look at this on off ratio. Um, usually we're going to start it at like a one to five on off ratio. So it's actually off more than it's on. And as the patient demonstrates tolerance, we can actually uh, lower that ratio to one to three. And if they have really good tolerance, you could even take it to a one to one, particularly if the patient's young and they're a long way into their rehab. And so the on time we would say might be six to 10 seconds. The off time can be 50 to 120 seconds. So you have an on off ratio of one to five and your on time is 10 seconds, then your off time would be 50 because the off time would have to be five times the on time. Okay, So again, a one to five is going to be a little bit gentler, so to speak, because they're going to get more rest in between the contractions. And we're also going to have a ramp time between two and five seconds. We want a ramp because we don't want to go instantaneously from relaxation to full contraction because that could actually, in a patient who is recovering, that could actually cause some damage. It could cause damage to the tendon, the ligaments, and so on and so forth, whatever that muscle is pulling on. Okay, So we want to ease into that contraction and then ease back to relaxation. That's why we use a ramp. And a safer bet would be to start off with a longer ramp time, maybe a five seconds, and then per patient tolerance, actually lower the ramp maybe down to two. But you never want to do instantaneous. Now, with NMES and Russian stimulation for strengthening, we don't so much use duration. We use a number of repetitions, so 10 to 20. And that means 10 to 20 on times. Okay? Remember, this is going to cycle between on time and off time. And I'll demonstrate this at the very end with actually how you do the setup. But basically, with a setup like this where we have the uh, electrodes on the quads here, when the machine turns on, when it's in its on time, that is when the patient would be engaging those quads isometrically here. They'd be using them in order to push against that TheraBand. Okay? 
And then when the machine turns on again, on time, then you engage the quads again. And you just go through that cycle over and over again. And that's what you do of 10 to 20 repetitions. And this can be done more frequently um, once every two to three hours. Now, for NMES in Russian, you also have to set the pulse duration and the frequency. Okay? And regardless of whether you're doing it for strengthening or edema purposes, how you set the pulse duration and the frequency depends on the size of the muscle. Okay? So I like to think of this on two extremes. Okay? Let's suppose, one, you're doing this on the gluteus maximus. That's probably the largest muscle by cross-sectional area in most humans or a small muscle, maybe one of the forearm flexor muscles, right? That's a smaller muscle. So if you have a large muscle like gluteus maximus, your pulse duration is gonna be anywhere between 200 and 350 microseconds, okay? So glute max is pretty big. If you're doing it on that, you'd probably go closer to the 300, 350 range. Um, if it's maybe an intermediate size muscle, maybe closer to 200. Now, if you've got a forearm muscle or even maybe an intrinsic muscle of the hand, like in the thenar eminence, very small muscles, now your pulse duration is going to be between 125 and 200 microseconds. And particularly for a thenar eminence muscle, I might start out with 125, maybe 130, 140 um, in, within that range. Again, as you go towards an intermediate size muscle, you might creep up towards that 200, somewhere in the middle. Then we have to set the frequency. Now for an intermediate size muscle, we're gonna go between 35 and 50 hertz. However, if the muscle is very large, like glute max, we may increase the frequency upwards of 80 hertz. Um, if you have a really big patient with a really big glute max, you can even go higher than 80 hertz. But then if you have a really small muscle, like in the forearm or even the thenar eminence, like we just mentioned, you might go down to 20 or 25 hertz, okay? So the pulse duration and the, and the frequency, this depends on the size of the muscle. These other settings up here depend on what you're using it for, whether it's edema or strengthening. Now for strengthening, look at the electrode placement, okay? Again, they're both on muscle bellies because this is electrical muscle stimulation. So this black one is on the VMO, muscle belly, and up here it's on the rectus femoris muscle belly. You can use two electrodes, you can use four electrodes, okay? As long as they're on muscle bellies, you're good. And if you wanna get really rigorous, you can look at a, a table or a figure of motor points to see where exactly to put the electrodes for uh, particular strengthening activities, okay? Let me now show you how I would actually set up NMES on myself, and I'll use the quads as an example. So first things first, I have my e-stim unit right here. This particular one allows me to do both TENS and NMES, which is what we're going to be doing in this short clip. I also have my electrodes right here. I'm going to be using this electrode and this one. You'll notice that the one right here is hooked up to a black wire. That would be the cathodic electrode. This one is hooked up to a red wire. That's going to be the anodic electrode. Where you put each one on the muscles doesn't matter as long as for NMES you put them on muscle bellies. So let me show you a decent place you can put them if you're trying to stimulate quadricep action. So again, it does not matter where I put the black electrode or the red one. I'll probably start by putting the black one on my vastus medialis obliquus muscle belly, which is right here. So let's do that. Make sure that's on there good. Then I'm gonna take the one hooked up to the red wire And I'm going to put that sort of up here proximally on the center of the quadriceps, so pretty much on the rectus femoris. So I'm going to put that right here. You'll notice both of these wires right here are hooked up to the same cord. So I'm going to take that cord and I'll plug it into my machine into the first channel. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to power the unit on. Now, remember that we're trying to stimulate the quadricep muscles. Quadriceps are a fairly large muscle. So we need to program the pulse duration and the frequency accordingly. So right here I have the pulse duration or the pulse width. It's the same thing. So let me go to set. And let's actually increase this to about 300. Remember, for large muscles, uh, we can even go up to 350 microseconds. Quadriceps are certainly a pretty large muscle. This machine only lets me go to a maximum of 300 microseconds, so that's what we're going to stick with. I'll hit set, and we need to change the pulse rate. 100 is a little bit high, um, but remember, typically for larger muscles, we can go up to about 80 hertz. So I'm actually going to start, we'll do about 80 hertz right here. Okay. 
So right now, this is on TENS mode. I need to switch it so I get to NMES, and on this machine and many others, it will actually just say EMS for electrical muscle stimulation. The C here is for continuous. I don't want that because I want ramp up and I want ramp downs. So I'm going to go to this right here. Currently, my ramp is set to two seconds. Oh, that's fine. We could even take the ramp up to three seconds. Okay, so let's go to ramp. Let's raise the ramp to three seconds. So it's going to take three seconds to ramp up to max contraction, three seconds to get that down to relaxation. And then we can even alter how long it's on for. So why don't we do on for 10 seconds? And then off, we can do a one to one ratio. Let's do that just so we get the most out of this video. And then set. And then when we're ready to start, we'll just start cranking up the intensity here. Initially, as you're cranking up the intensity, you'll just feel a tingle, almost like you are doing a TENS. But of course, you have to take the intensity up higher to achieve tetanic contraction. Let's take a look at that. Right now, it's in the off time. When it turns on, you'll actually see my vastus medialis contract, and that's my cue to also actively engage knee extension through my quads. There you can see the tetanic contraction. Now I'm going to actively engage. And I'm going to actively engage until it goes to the off. And there it is. Off. Then I'll wait for the next on cycle to come. It's ramping up right now. You're about to see vastus medialis. There we go. Now let me actively engage the quadriceps and then it ramps down. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.